Hey folks, I'm Jen Foxbot, and in this video I'm going to talk about logic gates and how we get from logic gates to actual computers. So the first person that built a fully functional computer uh, basically built an adder out of logic gates. So it's a way to add two different binary numbers together. Um, and once you can do that, well then you have to tackle subtraction, which is a little bit different. Um, but once you can do addition and subtraction, you can do multiplication and division, and um, it basically is the foundation for um, how computers were made. Um, it gets a little complicated once you start going up the ladder, um, but logic gates are where computers came from. So let's learn about how they got started. Um, Alright, so first of all, when we're talking about logic gates, we're talking about um, something that deals in a counting system that only has uh, two numbers. So that's where binary numbers come from. And binary numbers are just, well, I should say, zero and one. Zero and one. Um, because we have ten fingers, well, most of us have ten fingers, um, our counting system is base ten, which means we have ten digits, zero through nine. Um, and then that allows us to build up uh, bigger and bigger numbers using those exact same digits. Binary numbers is called base 2 because you only have two numbers, 0 and 1. So if you want to count beyond 0, 1, you have to add more digits, just like we do in base 10. Once you get to number 10, you added a 1 and a 0 together to get the number 10. Um, to keep counting, you just repeat the process. Then you add, okay, so you have that first digit is 1, 0, then you go 1, 1, 1, 2, etc., all the way up to 1, 9, and then you go 2, 0. So when you get bigger and bigger numbers, you're just adding more and more digits. And by digits, I just mean those uh, placeholders, basically. Um, so with binary, you do the exact same thing, except you have to do it, uh, the numbers get really long really quickly because you're only dealing with two digits. Um, so to count in binary, you would do 0, comma, 1, comma, um, <laughs> 1, 0, comma, 1, 1, comma, 1, 0, 0, etc. Um, I don't really want to get into that because we're talking about logic gates, but it helps to understand binary first. Okay, so now logic gates. Here we go. Um, the most uh, common logic gates are the AND, that's the AND, and the OR gate. Um, they each have two inputs, a B and an output, which we'll call, oh no, zero. Uh, we'll call this C, I guess, because zero and O are the same. Um, and so the same thing for OR, A, B, and then C. Um, so the way that we describe how these work, we use what's called truth tables, which tell us how the inputs, how A and B, affect C, the output of the logic gate. So for the AND gate, um, if you have A, B, and C, if A is 0 and B is 0, um, the AND gate, both inputs have to be 1 for the output to be 1. So that's 0 until you get 1, 1. Um, and hopefully y'all can see that. So that's the AND gate. The OR gate, um, whoops, I'll do A, B, C. So the OR gate, either one of the inputs has to be on for the output to be on. So 0, 0, still 0. If, this, if any of the inputs are 1, you get a, an output of 1. And if both outputs are 1, then you still get a 1. Um, and then uh, I should probably also mention the NOT gate. Um, for some reason I'm blanking on this symbol. I want to say it's just like, there's a little circle that's crucial. The NOT gate, so this is A, and we'll call that C because that's the output. Um, the NOT gate only has one input, and what it does is it flips um, the signal of the output. So if you have A and C, if A is 0, C is 1. And if A is 1, then C is 0. Um, so that's pretty cool. And what you can do with the NOT gate is you can tack it on to the AND gate. So if you draw a little circle here, all of a sudden you have a NAND gate, which means a NOT AND gate. Um, and same thing for the OR gate. Now you have a NOR gate. <laughs> it gets kind of cute. Um, but now, so this is basically, oh, I could have kept these, huh? Um, so the NAND gate is the opposite of the AND gate. So here, we'll do this. Uh, so if it's 0, 0, you get 1, 
0, 1, you get 1, 1, 0, you get 1, and 1, 1, you get 0. Um, same thing for the NOR gate. It's the opposite of the OR gate. So everywhere you would get a 0 uh, for the OR gate is now a 1. So, and vice versa, zeros become 1s. So, um, and then uh, you can also do a little bit of um, logic gate adding together uh, to get what's called an XOR gate. Um, so I'll do that over here. So the XOR gate uh, looks like uh, that. There we go. Um, that's how we draw it. And the way that this one works, A, B, C, same thing. The way that this one works, it's called the exclusive OR gate. So the output of the X OR gate um, is uh, on, or one, if and only if the two outputs are different. So this is super cool because if we get zero, zero, the, or sorry, the, if, the, if and only if the inputs are um, different. I think I said outputs. Anyway, so A and B are the same, so C is zero. But if, you, if they're different, then you get an output of one. Um, same thing here, you get an output of one. Here's the crucial part, because if the inputs are the same, whether it's zero, zero, or zero, one, meaning if A is one and B is one, output is zero. Um, and that's really important because this gate is how we are going to do addition. Um, I don't want to give it away quite yet because I think that y'all are smart and you can piece it together. Um, so I'll give you a little bit of a hint. We want to think about what we have to do when we do addition. In base 10, if we add two numbers together, um, I'm going to erase this. Um, if we add two numbers together, like 11 and, well, actually, let's do 15 and 16, we have to carry, right? Because 5 plus 6 is 11. You have to carry that 1 over to the next digit. So now you have 1 plus 1 plus another 1, which is 3. And that gives you your answer. Binary is the exact same thing. You have to carry information from one digit to the next. Um, and so that's where addition gets a little tricky because when you have binary addition, so you have 1, 0, 0, 1, and 0, 1, 1, 1, um, you get 1 plus 1, you would get 0, you carry the 1, 0 plus 1 plus 1, again you get a 0, actually let's make that 0 to make this a little easier, um, you carry the 1, you get a 1, and then you get another 1. So again, 1 plus 1, um, the digit is zero, but it flips over. You have to carry that along. Then you get another zero because one plus zero plus one, you still have to carry that over. And now, because I changed my numbers a little bit to make it easier, um, you get the one plus zero plus zero gets you one. So you have to carry that information um, over. So when you are inputting your digits into the logic gates, say um, the first two digits would be one and one, this would now be zero, but you have to find a way to send that information to the next logic gate so that it knows what it's going to do. All right, so I'll leave it there for now. Um, I want you all to figure out how you would make an adder with the XOR logic gates. I'll give you a hint. You also need the AND gates. Um, and there's something about carrying or like processing the information from the inputs. So you'll need actually two logic gates from uh, your initial input. Um, what other hint would I give you? Oh, it doesn't have to be a super long adder. I would recommend start by thinking about a two-digit adder. So if you only had a two-digit binary number, you only have a few number of possibilities, right? You have zero, zero, you have zero, one, you have one, zero, and one, one. Start simple and work it up from there because once you figure out how to do this, then you move on to three digits, and then you basically can just daisy chain your logic gates together in kind of like the same configuration. So once you figure out this, most of the hard work is done. All right, so I challenge you to do that. Uh, the next video, I'll actually talk about how you combine the XOR gates. If you follow me on Instagram, you might have gotten a little sneak preview, so check it out. All right, and of course, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you very much for watching, and see you next time. Bye!